Hello, everyone. I welcome you once again to this new Makita review. Today, we're featuring a tool that can be quite handy. I believe you know exactly what I mean. I'm talking about the Makita Cordless Magazine Screwdriver, the DFR550. Essentially, it's an indispensable tool for those who regularly need to drive dozens of drywall screws quickly without having to manually place each screw on the bit every time. However, the question arises, what can this machine do? What does it have to offer? And of course, a crucial consideration, is it worth the investment or not? I would say we'll find out together in this video today. So without further ado, let's get started. As usual, if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to this channel for free and activate the bell to never miss a video in the future. You can find the current prices to support this channel in the video description below. Thank you for your support, and let's dive into the review right after the intro. The Makita Magazine Screwdriver DFR550, definitely a very practical device. You requested the video, and today is the day. It's right here in front of us on the table. We'll take a detailed look at this tool. At this point, thanks again for the video suggestion. If you have more ideas on what I should feature or test, feel free to write them in the comments below. Some of you may remember that some time ago, I introduced the Makita Cordless Drywall Screwdriver DFS452. If you haven't seen the video, you can check it out here. I'll link it in the top right corner on the info card. It's definitely worth watching again. And today, you could say we have its counterpart on the table, the DFR550, a magazine screwdriver that allows us to sink drywall screws more efficiently and quickly compared to a regular drywall screwdriver. As you can already see, it requires collated screws, but I'll talk about that in more detail later. I'd say let's start with the actual magazine screwdriver. As you can see, there isn't necessarily much to see from the outside. Therefore, I'd say let's jump straight into the contents of the package to see what accessories come with the actual magazine screwdriver. First and foremost in the package, there's a stack of papers, starting with the user manual for the DFR540, for the DFR550, which is the one we currently have in front of us, and also for the DFR570. Next, there are safety instructions, warranty conditions, and of course, the Makita promotional flyer. Oh yes, DFR750 I mean of course, you should be able to read it correctly. Next in the product box, a small paper bag, seemingly empty. The contents of the product box are actually spread out in the product box, including the two bits for the magazine screwdriver. And that's all there is in the product box. So from the package, we get the actual magazine screwdriver, the stack of papers, and additionally two bits. The screws, or the collated screws, need to be obtained separately. So with that, let's take a detailed look at the new magazine screwdriver. Let's start with the exterior, or the first impression. I must admit, upon first glance at this Makita magazine screwdriver, I immediately think of the regular drywall screwdrivers. No, not the DFS 452 with a brushless motor, but the previous version, the DFS 450 because the structure is completely identical from this point forward. Only the magazine screwdriver has a corresponding magazine screw attachment. In this sense, the magazine screwdriver, as we're accustomed to from Makita, is qualitatively well made. This means we have clean joints and high quality materials, both at the top and at the back in the handle area, with polycarbonate, rubberization, and some metal at the front. Similarly, in terms of size, I would say we have a relatively compact device here. Especially when looking from above, you can really see how slim this cordless magazine screwdriver is. The total length from the tip to the end of the handle is approximately 39 to 40 centimeters. Also connected significantly the weight. As you can currently see, the magazine screwdriver is equipped with an 18 volt 5 ampere hour battery, allowing you to drive a good number of screws. And I would say let's take a look at the weight of the device in relation to this battery. As evident, the DFR550, including a 5 ampere hour battery, has a gross weight of approximately 2400 grams. And I would say that's certainly acceptable for prolonged use. Of course, lighter is better, especially when you have to work overhead for an extended period. 
Nevertheless, one could also say that with this 5 ampere hour battery, it might be preferable to use several smaller ones, for example, with 1.5 ampere hours each. This significantly reduces the weight of the device. Therefore, let's measure the solo weight again, and as you can see, without the large battery, the magazine screwdriver is definitely much lighter at approximately 1760 grams. By the way, let's stick with the topic of the battery, as mentioned earlier. It's an 18 volt LXT device, so we can only use our 18 volt batteries. Whether it's 5 ampere hours, 3, 4, or 1.5 ampere hours, it only affects the runtime of the magazine screwdriver. A bit unusual, in my opinion, is the battery insertion, as shown. The battery is not inserted from the back of the machine, but, as you can see, from the front. I would say, after a few uses, you definitely get used to it, and it has the advantage that we can directly use the battery status indicator on the battery itself. Therefore, the magazine screwdriver does not have a separate battery status display. At the very end of the machine, we see, who would have thought, clearly the main attachment of the magazine screwdriver. And I would say this is definitely ergonomic. In my opinion, it's not too big, not too small, and the shape is quite comfortable. And of course, this is emphasized in black by a large rubberized area, making the handle truly non-slip. In terms of controls, this magazine screwdriver, just like a regular drywall screwdriver, has a small lever at the top for clockwise and counterclockwise rotation, a lock in the middle, and of course, the trigger for the index finger. In my opinion, definitely easy to operate, both for right and left-handed users. A little further forward, we see next to the installed motor and the entire mechanism, this small metal bracket and it's about the belt clip, which in my opinion is adequately sized. And as evident, we have a significant advantage here. We can mount the belt clip on both the left and right sides, providing the flexibility to hook the device regardless of whether we're right-handed or left-handed. Just below, as already mentioned, now the built-in motor. As you can see, it's definitely not a brushless motor as we find in almost every new device, but a brushed motor. For that, we see this black cover in the front. Underneath, not only the two carbon brushes are hidden. In this sense, it's a bit of a double-edged sword because we essentially have the advantage of being able to easily change the motor's carbon brushes, achieving an almost infinite motor lifespan. On the other hand, the drawbacks are that a regular brushed motor is not as powerful as a brushless motor and is significantly less efficient compared to a brushless motor. Nevertheless, I would say let's stay curious about what to expect from this device in practical tests. By the way, the motor basically has two positions, on or off, similar to the trigger at the top. In idle, it reaches speeds of up to 4000 RPM. How this translates into performance, we'll see in the practical test shortly. Moving on in the text, now to the front, with the heart of this device, namely the magazine screw attachment. As visible, the attachment itself is made of high quality materials, partly aluminum, mostly metal. The feed mechanism itself down here is made of plastic and polycarbonate. I would say let's start at the back of the screw attachment, visible in black on the left side of the screwdriver. There is a relatively large adjusting screw to release or mount the entire sinking unit at the top. After loosening the adjusting screw, we can easily remove the entire attachment to then easily change or replace the bit. As mentioned earlier, there are two additional bits included in the package. The chuck used here is a regular hexagonal chuck with a size of one quarter inch. Moving on to this rather complex structure, let's look at the next adjusting screw, which is located on the underside, as you can see, also very large to ensure easy access even when mounted. This screw is for adjusting the screw depth, as indicated by the symbol. Turn it to the left to increase the screw depth and right to reduce it. It's advisable to try this out gradually, starting at the lowest setting and incrementally increasing it to determine when the screw aligns flush with the material. Now, let's go to the front on the underside where you can see the corresponding screw feed. 
I'll demonstrate how to insert the screws separately, and of course, crucially, the adjustment of the depth stop is also visible on the side. It's important to know what length of screws you want to drive. Currently, I have 35mm drywall screws in front of me, which the DRF-550 can easily drive. As evident, the DRF-550, as the name suggests, can handle screws from a minimum of 25 to a maximum of 55mm in a total of 7 steps, which should be sufficient for most screwing scenarios. However, if this is not enough, you might want to consider the DRF-750, as it can effortlessly drive screws up to 75 millimeters. So we now know that we want to drive some 35 millimeter screws, and we absolutely need to adjust the depth stop, otherwise we may encounter problems and the screws won't be properly driven. To do this, we see these two almost silvery small levers on the top. We need to press them down simultaneously with our thumbs to adjust the depth stop. As mentioned earlier, the depth stop has precisely 7 settings ranging from 25 to 55 millimeters, and the screws on the top are a total of 35 millimeters long. Therefore, in this case, only the step with 35 is relevant, which I'll now set. And that looks good, so now I'll put the entire assembly back on and tighten it. Finally, all that's left is to supply the machine with the appropriate ammunition. That means we now need the collated screws and insert them into the magazine. For this, we see a small recess on the underside, which is hard to miss. Insert the belt and push it all the way up. Once at the top, it's usually necessary to give it a final touch by pulling up slightly at the top and inserting it into the screw attachment. And as you can hear or see, the belt is now in the screwdriver and we can use it effortlessly. So far, so good. We've now thoroughly examined the magazine screwdriver in detail and it's ready for use. Therefore, I would say let's move on to the practical test to see what it's truly capable of. I'm curious, so I would say sit back and let's begin the practical test. Before we can start with the practical test or the screwing, it's necessary to load the magazine screwdriver with screws and adjust it. Inserting the collated screws can be a bit tricky if you haven't done it before, but once you get the hang of it, reloading is done within seconds. For adjusting the device, it's best to perform a few test screwings in the same wood to determine the appropriate countersink depth. As mentioned earlier, on the left side, we find the small adjustment wheel. In my opinion, this wheel could be a bit smoother. In the process, I conducted several test screwings, gradually increasing the countersink depth. After setting the perfect countersink depth, the magazine screwdriver is ready to sink hundreds of screws, and that's exactly what I did. For the test of the Makita DFR550, I drove a total of three belts, each containing 50 screws in succession, which admittedly doesn't take much time. As evident, there were no problems at first. The brush motor has sufficient power to drive the screws without hesitation, and there were no missed screwing operations during the test. The only thing to note is that the magazine screwdriver should be placed vertically on the material to ensure each screw is securely driven. Regarding the handling of the machine, I couldn't find anything negative. The device is easy to grip and maneuver safely. This allows for quickly sinking numerous screws in succession. As for the battery life, I can't provide a concrete statement, since the magazine screwdriver can undoubtedly drive countless screws before the battery runs out. Anyone with experience in this regard can write it down in the comments how many screws one can really drive with a large 18 volt 5 ampere hour battery. In summary, it can be said that the Makita Magazine screwdriver, the DFR550, definitely leaves a good overall impression. For people working daily in drywall construction, sinking thousands of screws daily, this device, in my opinion, is more than recommendable. The only desirable feature for this device might be a powerful brushless motor so that difficulties do not arise when screwing into harder materials. So far, so good. That concludes it from me. What do you think of this magazine screwdriver? Feel free to share your opinion or experiences in the comments. I'm very curious. And otherwise, I would say if you like this video, show it with a strong thumbs up.
As always, to support my work and, if not done yet, definitely subscribe to this channel now and activate the bell to not miss any new videos in the future. You can find the current prices, as usual, in the video description. Thank you very much for your support, and otherwise, I would say take care, I wish you well, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.